Hello truckers, it is a beautiful day for trucking in the USA. So we're picking this machine up. It's a Cat 349EL track hoe, no bucket, no counterweight. It's supposed to be right at about 90 to 95,000 pounds. I will get you guys an actual weight on it in a little bit here. We're taking this to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Kind of excited about this because this is going to be the biggest thing I've ever hauled. It'll be definitely the heaviest. Uh, you guys know uh, for the last couple of months here, I've been running this eight axle, kind of getting used to it. It's gonna be quite the adventure getting this hauled, I think. You see how I got this thing tied down here? Those are all half inch grade 70 chains, good for 10,200 pounds a piece. I hop up here, I'm gonna show you guys what the cab of this thing looks like. Mind you, this is a used machine, so it's a little dirty. But a lot cleaner than a lot of the machines I've picked up in the past. I'm not gonna fire it up this morning because I got the stack cover on it right now and everything still, so we're not gonna do that. Seat's actually pretty comfortable. This is a good machine. As you can see on the back of the machine here, it's got this chain drive system, and what that does is it comes down to the ground, you hook it onto the counterweight, and it'll pick the counterweight up so you can bolt it onto its back. So that's the Cat 349EL, really cool machine. Alright, we got her uh, all weighed and everything, and I, I nailed where it was on the trailer. I didn't have to move the machine. I did have to slide my fifth wheel uh, back about six inches, got everything figured out there, was able to fill it full of fuel. Getting real good at running this trailer, so that made me really happy. I mean, we got exactly 60,000 pounds of the drive, was actually like 59, 550 or something like that. And uh, we're 13.5 on the steer, and then about 69,000 on the trailer, so we're about 142 gross. That means this machine is right at about 92,000 pounds. Because uh, the, the way Montana wanted to do it, they wanted us, if we were gonna run the two lane, to run pilot cars the whole way. Yeah, I didn't want to mess with that, so what I decided to do is uh, gonna run down uh, I-15 to I-90 and cut across back that way. Probably tonight, I won't make it any further than Helena because I've only got about, oh, two hours and 45 minutes left that I can drive with that. bottom side of third. We're not going very fast at all. Just kind of hovering between the second and third stage on the jig. Doing 12 miles an hour and just wanting to hold things right about right there. This is a pretty steep hill coming off into Helena here. When you get onto one of these, you just got to take your time, take it easy, run on down. I could come off of this a lot faster, but I'd be getting the brakes nice and hot, and that's something you don't want to do. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you should never smell brakes. It makes it a lot easier when you can do it that way because you're, you're not even using the brakes. You've got them in reserve. Because when your brakes get hot, they fade. When your brakes start to fade, that's when you really start to run into issues. That's when the truck can run off at you. Beautiful, beautiful morning up here. You just got kind of these low hanging clouds here over the top of the uh, mountains, and the mountains have this nice frosty cap on them this morning.
guys, here we are just dropping off the hill into Butte. It's kind of crazy, we got this little milky layer of fog just hanging out in the bottom of the valley this morning. take any risks and I don't want to have to make that hard shift into the bottom and so as we're creeping up here we're getting to the 25 mile an hour uh, speed zone now back of 
that truck. I think she hit a deer or something. Hey, westbound, westbound, watch yourselves. There's an accident in the hand in the shoulder there. As we're breaking around the corner here, this is where you're almost to the bottom, the end is in sight. At this weight though, I really don't want to let it ramp up yet because this thing is going to pick up speed really fast. Picked him up from dad here a little bit ago. We'll uh, see how he's doing. I, I can tell he's in pain trying to sit on that leg, so he's still got to figure out how to sit in here and everything yet. But I'm sure happy to have him back with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's looking pretty good though. He's put on a bunch of weight. You know, he's getting around okay. So we'll see how he does here. Say hi to everybody on the internet. Good morning, Dexter. Good morning, how are you? Are you happy to be back in the truck? Do you need to go bathroom? As you guys can see, he's getting around okay. He's still skipping on that back foot some. Hi, Dexter. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Well, having that leg messed up sure hasn't hampered his spirits any. He's still just the same dog he ever was. That makes me feel pretty good. Dexter's pretty resilient. Hey, Dexter. Ready to go? All right. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. I'm up in Cedar Rapids, Iowa this morning, uh, dropping off this machine. This is a uh, Cat 349EL. And this is the biggest thing I've ever hauled. This is a big boy. I uh, figured I'd take a minute this morning to show you guys what it takes to actually get one of these things off of this new trailer. I've already dumped the suspension on the tractor. I've already got the PTO running, but before I uh, do anything else, what I need to do is I need to drop the suspension on the trailer because it will change things. So I'm going to reach back here. There's a valve there. Kick that over. And the trailer will start to air down.
reasons I really like this drop rail trailer. I'm actually standing on the ground right now between the frame rails. And I can almost completely stand up right here. It makes it a lot easier to take this stuff off than having to crawl underneath it. Especially considering this is a hard iron to bang your head on. of wood in here. Grab my block of wood. I get set up on the back of the fifth wheel here. About right there. You just bring the next port down to where it just touches that. You take the plugs out. Kick that over. Then you want to just tuck all this down inside of here. Let that tuck down in.
she is the heaviest thing I've ever hauled. 92,000 pounds. As you guys can see, I got the lift axle on the trailer up, the lift axle on the flip axle there is down. And the reason for doing that is, I'm still only running the same amount of tires on the ground, but in this case here, I still have the shims in here. Or flip my sign here. I still have the shims in here. And so in order to lift this axle, I have to pull these bolts out, uh, lift those shims out of there, put them back on, and then I have to tighten those bolts back up again and then lift the axle. So it's a little bit of a production. So a lot of the time when I know that I'm going to be going and reloading in a little bit, which I probably am this morning, I'll just leave all that assembled and then just lift the last axle on the trailer instead of lifting the flip axle. So. Anyways, that's it for this one. We'll catch up with you guys on the next episode.